the big stage in Rogers, Arkansas, and the top 10 anglers who made it through two rounds of elimination to get here. The crowd was nervous. The web coverage throughout the day indicated several big limits, and so it was anybody's event to win. Five fast limit, new leader. It felt like a roller coaster ride. You guys welcome to the stage, Casey Ashley. This is the first time I've ever been to Beaver Lake, and uh, it's got a lot of fish in it. Three days, he's told up. 37 pounds and two ounces of Beaver Lake Bass. A five bass limit! 16 pounds even to the new leader. Casey Ashley took the lead early and held it until David Dudley electrified the crowd. Pretty good day four, man. Yeah, it was a good day. I kept getting stronger as the tournament went on. We need to see that number five. Wow! A five bass limit for the Castro Pro David Dudley. New leader, 16 pounds and nine ounces, moves David to first place with 54 pounds and 14 ounces of Beaver Lake Bass. But Dudley would be knocked off by the reigning angler of the year. The number one ranked angler in the world, Andy Morgan. Do you have a five bass limit? I've got a five bass limit. See number four and number five. A five bass limit! Wow! No one was expecting so many bags over 15 pounds on the final day, and more than a few in the crowd felt that Morgan had secured the win. 16 pounds and eight ounces, he is the new leader. And then it was time for one more bag. Time for a man who had started the day with a small lead. Time to find out who was going to finish this roller coaster ride of a tournament and walk away with over $100,000. All the other pros have been eliminated except these two. It's Matt Airy versus Andy Morgan. Let's get it going. On day one, weighed in 13 pounds even. Day two, 14 pounds and six ounces. Yesterday, 16 pounds and four ounces. He had a two pound, eight ounce lead over Andy Morgan coming into the final day. Do you have number four? But before we see what's left in his bag, let's find out how we got to this moment. The Walmart FLW Tour came to Rogers, Arkansas as the first breath of spring was coming across the Ozark Mountains. For many in the field of 170 professional bass fishermen, Beaver Lake is a source of frustration. It's a lake where the fishing changes daily, and to succeed, you have to be able to adapt. Beaver Lake being a flood lake that takes in all the water from other lakes, it always positions fish in different places in different parts of the lake. So it's always a mystery. Even though we come here every year, it's still a mystery on what you're going to catch them on and what part of the lake you're going to fish. The first round of a Walmart FLW Tour event features the full field and weights are carried over each day. Only the top 20 make it into the second round. So no matter what your game plan is to win a major tour event, you have to make the cut. Going into an event, your number one goal, for me anyway, and for a lot of these guys, is to make that top 20 cut. Now that's not easy, okay? You have 170, 180 guys out there of the best fishermen in the world. So to make that top 20 cut is, is, is definitely pretty difficult, but that's your first goal, because if you're not inside that top 20, then you don't have that opportunity to win. That's a good one, so probably a three and a quarter pounder. So what we need, we need four more of those, and we'll be fishing tomorrow. Yes, big fish. You know, as a professional angler, you got three categories you're striving for. 
course, number one is to win. That is a giant fish. Number two is to make the cut, which is 20th place to get you into Ooh, third day and hopefully a fourth fish. day. I don't know what to do. He's still on it. Category number three is just to get a check. I tend to lean towards number one and only one. And then if one doesn't happen, then you kind of shift down to category two and then shift down to category three. And if you don't make it in category three, yeah, Bro. that's when you just want to turn around and somehow kick yourself in the butt. So it's all about, at the end of the year, making that, that Forestwood Cup. And when you make those top 20s consistently, you don't have to worry about making that, that Forestwood Cup and you can fish a lot cleaner or without that, that in your mind, really, you know? I think that's the biggest thing, being able to make that cut. You're gonna call yourself a professional. You're gonna have to make some cuts. I mean, that's where the juice is. That's where, that's where the bread's buttered. You're gonna have to get into cuts to make some money. And that's what I'm in here for, is to make some money. Because if you don't make the cut, you're going home. You make the cut, you're gonna stay and fish for the whole shenanigans, so. 10 pounds, seven ounces, puts him in 20 place with 22, eight. We'll see what happens, it's gonna be close. It's gonna boil down to, I'm either in or I'm gonna be right outside. Bubble boy yesterday. I think it's fixing to change though. I should go up pretty good. I mean, he's got 15 pounds once. 15 pounds, four ounces, puts him in second place from the big round I'm not going to make the cut today. You know, I'd probably end up 23rd, 24th. Um, it's a good finish, good points. But the thing is, to get so close, to have that opportunity to fish another day, you never know what could happen tomorrow. Wheeler didn't make it to the weekend round of fishing, while Scott Martin managed a good bag and squeaked into the cut. Andy Morgan made a huge leap from 21st to second place, and David Dudley made the top 10 even though he had lost that five pounder at the boat. The man who took the lead on day three was Spencer Sheffield, and he was about to find out just how fickle Beaver Lake can be. I've got a lot of good stuff that I haven't, I haven't hit yet that, uh... I've been saving for today in the mall. There's nobody ahead of me. <laughs> I just, I just got to keep the same, the same pace up, keep it going. You know, I mean, it, it definitely feels good going out third day, first place, any day, first place. Feel them twist my jerk bait, but they won't touch it. <laughs> Unbelievable. I had one bust out from behind under that dock to get my shake kit and then see me. I don't ever catch the, the qual. There he is. God dang it! Wow. What is the problem with them, man? I love the pressure. I fish better under pressure. I mean, when I get to the absolute breaking point, that's when I have my best tournament. Got him. I just want to win one. That's the thing. I want to be able to win one of these things. You know, my first year, I had a chance to win three, three of them. And I feel like I did win two of them, you know, and just bad luck. Come on, Beaver Lake. Be sweet to me. It's so hard to put down what you've what's got you there, you know, and, and I'm the world's worst about it. I know when everybody bites on, though, and it ain't on. They have gone from super deep water to super shallow water in three days, and, I mean, it completely skipped over me. I needed five of those right there. 12 pounds and 11 ounces. You're four ounces off the lead. I ain't even going to make the cut tomorrow. Yeah, we got five pounds, dude. 11 pounds and six ounces, Mark. That's got you in third place. I got nothing. New leader, 16 pounds and four ounces. Today I could have 16 or 17 pounds a day if every fish that I seen would have bit that come up after my bait. I could easily take 16 baits and pounds tomorrow if I just fish for sure. If you can muster up seven pounds and four ounces, you fish tomorrow. Otherwise, Mark Rose goes. So it's all about the 10th place hot seat right now. Four today worth. Five pounds and five ounces. Mark Rose is in. Spencer, you will fall to 12th place. Well, I didn't make it. Pretty bummed out. Leading the tournament going into the third day and ended up finishing 12th is absolutely horrible. Kind of embarrassing, but, you know, I didn't have anything to lose today. I just went out and went fishing and, and tried to catch the big ones, and it didn't work. A tough day on the water that leaves Spencer wondering what might have been. FLW Tour is brought to you by Straight Talk. Same phones, same networks, half the cost. Walmart. Save money, live better. Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Minn Kota. Anywhere, anytime. 
George Foreman. Lose the fat, not the taste. And experience more at evanroot.com. The final day of the 2014 Walmart FLW Tour event on Beaver Lake saw 10 men preparing for some windy, rainy conditions and a new angler going out on the lead. The opportunity to win one of these things doesn't come around often and I'm just hoping to be able to close it today. Um, I've had a great week. I've caught a lot of fish. I'm on a consistent pattern. Um, I, I think it's a really strong pattern. It's, it's uh, Everything fits for the time of year and uh, you know, Second, third, fourth, fifth, those are great finishes, but you know, a first place can sometimes solidify that career and, and you know, that's what I'm hoping to do. If somebody does catch 17, 18, and you're four or five pounds behind and the leader only catches 12, I mean, you have a shot to come from way back in the field and win. I'm only two and a half pounds down, so I feel, you know, my chances are fairly good, so I have a good day, I can make a run and, and, and possibly win this thing. Showtime now, brother. See if we can get the right bites today and catch a big stringer. Ready to get this show on the road. The wind's pretty stiff this morning, so I'm just kind of keeping it in the wind and just winding it real slow and bumping the bottom with it. One just rattled it. This time of year when they're trying to come up to spawn, I think, you know, the later the better because there's more fish moving up with the sun and the higher, you know, more light and stuff throughout the day, but it's been, it's kind of been hard to gauge the bite because it's, it's just been so spread out for me. Airy goes out on the final day as the leader with no guarantee that he'll return in the same position. This event saw a different angler take the spot each day, which is often the refrain when anglers fish at Beaver Lake, hero or zero. God, I never even had to bait it, didn't feel like it about took the rod out of my hand. Probably need to be throwing that football head that I need to be throwing right now. Weather dictates how you're going to fish on this lake. I've been mostly finesse fishing all week, so I'm kind of changing gears. I hadn't caught any on jerkbait this week, but the day would be the day to do it. Over the years, the path to victory here at Beaver Lake has come in a variety of ways. Andy Morgan won here in 2007, his only tour victory of his storied career so far. He finessed fish a worm around docks. Back in 2007, I mean, the weather was really warm. It was in May. Uh, there was a little more water in the bushes. It was kind of a post-spawn deal, and there was a lot of schooling fish. So I caught about half my fish schooling, and the other half on a, just a uh, zoom finesse worm. So just kind of burning the bank. I had a couple areas I'd start on in the mornings on schoolers, and I'd get me a limit or four or five fish, and that's kind of what rode me to the, to the victory there. And he came back from a two-and-a-half-pound deficit and defeated Jay Yellis on the final day. In 2009, the lake was flooded, and while Jason Christie was leading going out on the final day, it was Ray Scheid who flipped his way to his second tour Ray win. Scheid is our Walmart Open champion. One of the most surprising wins came in 2011 when Brian Thrift took a tip from his friend and fellow competitor Matt Airy and started working a jerk bait faster than normal, and he became the first pro to record a 20-pound stringer in competition on this lake. Number four, another good large mouth. It was a cold winter. We were here in early March. The water was still in the low 40s, and it was a, a total jerk bait bite. I caught most of my fish on a jerk bait, just covering water and throwing that jerk bait. And I tried to make that work here again this year because the fish aren't on the beds and they should still bite it. But I couldn't get them to bite a moving bait. I had to drag that Demiki finesse Mickey worm around to catch what I caught. In 2012, the Alabama rig was the dominant bait, and David Dudley used it as part of a two pronged approach. When I won here at Beaver Lake, I was doing two things. I was throwing an Alabama rig on windy banks, windy points, anywhere where wind was crushing in on the banks. And then I was going to some calmer banks with a wacky Cinco, fishing it around, you know, stick ups and anything that I could find. Dudley's dive into the water to get the fish in the boat remains one of the most unforgettable moments in his career. That's what you talk going after one, boy. No matter who wins this tournament, it will go down in the record books as another one of a kind victory on a lake that never fishes the same twice. The first day I caught them on a, on a drop shot and then the second day I actually caught them all on a, on a tube and then yesterday was kind of just like a mixture. I caught them one on a drop shot, one on a tube, a couple on a jerk bait. There he is. I'm throwing, I'm throwing a little jackal four inch shad tail swim bait and 
you're gonna get a lot of bites on it, which I think is gonna be the key. A little bit better fish. Come on, baby. Give up. All right. That's a nice spot of bass. Couple pounds. Cody Meyer is always adapting and thought he had quickly figured something out this morning, but it was Casey Ashley who was about to discover that the good bass were still holding in his primary water. Four pound large mouth and a three pound spot off of the stretch. First day of the tournament. These fish are pulling up, getting ready to spawn. What's going on? Might be a pretty good one there. Should be coming out of that tree. Ah, yeah. Yeah, well, you got that swim bait choke. That's a three pounder all day long. Did you know that in the last 17 years, no angler has ever won the Forestwood Cup twice? It's bass fishing's biggest prize, and this year at Murray Lake in South Carolina, one angler will win half a million dollars. FLW Tour Beaver Lake, starting it off right with a large mouth. Get in here. Good way to start. Yeah! <laughs> That one, buddy, that's full grown, just like yesterday. It was a busy morning on Beaver Lake for the top 10 anglers. The approaching rain caused the bass to be very active. For local stick, Travis Fox, the idea of smacking a big bag and knocking out some big names was both exciting and nerve wracking at the same time. I feel pretty confident about being able to catch a limit today. Cloudy, windy, overcast days, they seem to bite a little bit better, so Having a big one right off the bat, that's what it takes. Bam, there's number two, back to back. I fish this point every day. Honestly, I don't think I've caught a fish off of it, and then today, made back to back casts. Look at that bait, how hard that fish hit. Crushed it, knocked the wire all the way up. While Travis was fishing shallow up the White River, David Dudley was down closer to the dam in the clear water with a clear idea of how the bass were relating to the bottom. It's a certain type of rock that you want. You know, it's so much rock in here that you got to find something that's really special with the rock. The key on is something, a different type of rock. There he is. Uh oh, uh oh, he just did figure eight. He's still on it. Get in it. Dudley had visions of his dive back in 2012 going through his mind as he did not want to let this fish get away. <laughs> he ain't that big, but it is a nice one. I thought we were going to have a replay from two years ago. This time, only got my arm wet. <laughs> kind of like to be like a couple ounces back in second, but, you know, I'll take the lead, obviously. But, I, I mean, if, if you don't have a big cushion at Beaver Lake, I mean, it's, it's so tight here. It's going to be anybody's game. I've got to keep fishing the back of these places, even though most of my bites are on those transition areas coming into these spawning areas. I'm trying to maintain. I'm trying to sustain. I'm trying to run a marathon and, and catch that 13 to 14 That's a good one. pound average a day, right around 13. I mean, typically, every time we come here, if you catch 50 pounds or a little bit better over four days, that's usually got to walk away with it. Yes, sir. Those win tournaments. Mwah. We keep catching them like that. We don't need but five bites. Andy Morgan had been in this position already once before this season, finishing second at Hartwell. And like that event, the reigning angler of the year was having a slow start to his morning. It 
just a lot of gravel banks, uh, a lot of rocks, some cedar trees. I'm just hodgepodge fishing. I'm covering a lot of ground, and basically from, from creek to creek there, I'm fishing everything in between. I'm just going as far and as fast as I can go and cover as much water as I can and hope to find an active fish, one that's pulled up and, and ready to eat. As soon as I threw it up there and it hit the water, couldn't have been four feet of water. Just took off with it. Big small mouth. Makes me think they may be biting the crankbait a little now too. <laughs> Black is cold. That's a good one to see at Beaver. Party crasher. As soon as it hit the water. I wish that I could just run water that I'd caught them on before, but you know, it never fails each day. I have to kind of just be free and easy and just kind of move and, and let my instincts play because it's it's so random almost that you have to just almost can everything. There's one. And it seems like if you can find a, a little point that's that's very close to a bluff or a, a, a steeper channel bank, that's the deal. I think they're just pulling up out of that deep water, you know, and, and sitting on those flat banks. Big smallmouth. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. Golly. Solid two and a half. There we go. How you like that net job, boys? <laughs> <laughs> On the final day of the Walmart FLW Tour, you gotta catch them and get them in the boat any way you can. Troy Morrow gets points for creativity in landing a bass. I know how to do it now. I just throw the net in the water and drag the fish into them. Not a giant, but a definite cull. It was fast and furious on the final day, which was giving everyone hope that they would knock Matt Airy from the top of the leaderboard. But he'd been on a run himself and was starting to believe he could close the door on his fellow competitors. You know, I'm using a seven foot three, medium heavy action Kissel Craft custom built rod. I'm using 15 pound P-line fluorocarbon, 100% fluorocarbon. Just throwing a little bitty finesse jig on uh, these little rock transitions leading into these spawning pockets. and. Some of the fish are starting to set up the spawn, I think. I caught one back there on a piece of wood that I hadn't, you know, I fished every day, but I hadn't had a bite on it yet. And she looked like she came right off the of bed. That's a big one. God almighty. Yeah! Yeah! That is how you win tournaments, baby, right there. What a beautiful fish, big pre-spawn female. All right, let's slam the door on them. There again, a little transition right there. If you look right there under the water, there's a couple little shelves that come out. She was right on the back side of that shelf, sitting right in that little gut, pulling up, wanting to get ready to spawn, you know. For Airy, the key was adjusting where he positioned his jig on the bluffy rocks, while David Dudley found that changing the color of his crankbait was a difference maker been throwing a red crawdad crankbait all morning. I went to a darker back, it's a dark day, and as soon as I switch, I just slam three of them in the boat. Gives me encouragement. That little stuff, just a little adjustment makes all the difference in the world. There he is, big one, big one. Yes. This has always been kind of a secret. It's kind of a spot that people would just fly by, you know. Hopefully we're gonna make it famous today. Travis Fox was fishing a half mile stretch of bank, speeding up and slowing down, depending on what's beneath the water. I know what's under the water here. There's, there's some different kinds of rock and stuff that are under the water and, and those fish will sit on that. And then, you know, sure I'm catching them off of bushes and lay downs and, and whatever, but it's, it's what's under those bushes is why those fish will stack up there. There's only a few little stretches down here that 
are better than others and it seems like every time you come by one of those places that's where you're going to get bit. Get in this boat. Get in this boat. Mm, there's number four. I think that one ought to go 15 and three quarters. We hope. And then a little. Good deal. Number four. Working our way to a good solid limit today. Working their way to a solid limit is what's pushed three of the top ten, Andy Morgan, Cody Meyer, and Mark Rose, into contention for the Kellogg's Angler of the Year title. And coming into this event, Myers and Morgan were one and two in the standings, separated by one point. As I've said before, that Angler of the Year race, me and Cody are real tight, but there's four or five guys that can still win that easily. You know, there's still quite a bit of the season left. And it really doesn't count until you get to the last tournament and they're all waiting, it's done. So, you know, you have to take your focus and put it on what you're doing and let the, you know, and just let the points accumulate from there, good or bad. You know, so far this year has been just an amazing year. You know, this is our, our fourth event and my third top 10. The way Andy Morgan fishes, you'll have to make five top 10s out of six tournaments to even have a chance. There's a bite. Come on, baby. Come on up. Oh, and keeper number four. Meyer had yet to get his limit, while Andy Morgan was looking to upgrade his limit with anything other than a spotted bass. Spot. There's a spot. I've been able to get several bites like this when it was slow. You know, you catch some little ones and miss a bunch, lose some. Uh oh, boys. I never should have tried that. That gummy. Stupid right there. Both freaking hooks in the corner of his mouth, and he comes off. Big spot, too. Gag me with a spoon. The day's going according to plan, which is rare. <laughs> In the past few days, I've run through these areas just once a day and caught them pretty good. Today, we will rotate these areas out and create a little milk run out of two or three primary areas because the way they're replenishing, I mean, it's any second, you know, another four pounder could pull up and we bust him. Freaking big one. God, this is the one, baby. Yeah! Like Moorhead said, that's the smell of money right there. Oh, that's a giant dude, if that's a bass. Like a 30 pound flathead. <laughs> That's fun. That was <laughs> Boy, if that was a bass, I would say lights out. Matt Airy would love to slam the door and turn the lights out on this event by landing one big bite. I really believe this is a calm before the storm. With a major front forecast to hit in the afternoon, David Dudley could have been talking about two things, the weather or the role he was about to go on, which started in a way he never expected. Oh, that's a fish. That's a big one. Dude, I got a big one. Oh my gosh, that is a giant. Yeah! Woo! Yeah, baby! Yeah! Dude, I thought I was hung up. I'm not gonna lie about it. I was like, yeah, I'm hung up. No, hung up. You, 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 you. That's an idiot. Oh my God. Wow! 
you know, I've had a limit now for a couple hours. You know, it's a small limit. So the rest of the day, we're gonna try to target bigger fish. We're fishing for some of these big smallmouth right here. You know, we're gonna run in the back of some pockets here pretty quick, kind of looking for that, that bigger bite, you know, where some large mouth might live. I feel decent, but not, you know, not like I, I know I got it one or anything, you know, I just, I know the guys, you know, below Andy would have to catch 17, 18 pounds to catch me with what I got. So I sure would like to get another big bite. That would make me feel really good. I don't know what we got. No, that's the large mouth. No, it's a spot. I know some people would probably kill for that right now. <laughs> Pretty little keeper spot. I like having that big fish out of the way, and I say it's out of the way, but really it's not. That's a bonus fish, because I now my odds of catching another big one, and we've got a lot of time left, are pretty good. And that's what it's gonna take to win this thing, is two or three of them really big ones. As the local, Travis Fox has lots of knowledge about Beaver Lake, and was giving an interview to FLW web editor, Kurt Niedemeyer, when things got exciting. Those first two fish were, uh, wind and current oriented. Um, you guys probably couldn't tell from that boat out there, but. Oh, God. No! Oh! Woo! You're my boy, Blue! There's number five anyways. Um, I guess that's pretty good for a live interview. Um, <laughs> While Fox was multitasking, down in the southern end of the lake, Micah Frazier was focusing his attention on clear water. Using a swim bait, he was targeting a wide range of depths across transition areas. This, this is the place I've caught a couple good ones throughout the tournament, but you know, just gotta keep hitting places and hitting places and just changing every day, so. Just part of it, you gotta, you gotta fish the places that have the right ingredients, you know, and, and just hope. There's not a lot of bites to be had, but there's some good smallmouth out there on these gravel points. This is a big one. Thank you, Lord. I didn't think I was ever gonna get him in the net. Solid smallmouth right there. One more of those and we'll be, in good shape. David Dudley was in the clear end of the lake this entire tournament, even though it's not traditionally where winning stringers are produced. Today, the wind and clouds were playing right into his hands. When I'm looking for a bank, I, I'm really not looking for a specific type of bank. On this lake, you kind of go to the wind. And when the wind does, it creates, it stirs up the plankton, the crawdads come out and start eating, and then, of course, the bass start feeding on the crawdads. There he is. Oh, giant, giant. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. Woo! Yeah, baby! Ooh, that's a good call right there. One thing's for sure, I'm not gonna be going down in the standings. Come on, be a bass. Voila! Andy Morgan had an interesting few minutes. On his hunt for a largemouth, he landed a walleye, nearly lost one of his favorite rods, and culled a keeper right after that. <laughs> walleye on the spot on back to back cast. He was still looking for a kicker, and now that it's later in the day, he felt his area was getting right. Here's what we got here. We got some big rock out off this gravel bank. We're gonna, what we're going to fixing to do, we're fixing to roll up, take this wiggle wart, and actually just get it, dig it down into the bottom and bump over those big boulder rocks. What's happening, we've got some smallmouth that are spawning around this stuff, I'm sure, or some big largemouth that could be you know, feeding on crawfish, shad, et cetera, around these big boulders. We're going to bump the wiggle wart off the boulders and see if we can't jack us one off there. Ooh, that's a big one. A big old largemouth. I'm going to have to come to you. Stay on there. Got my one freaking hook. Yep. Bingo. <laughs> Big girl. That's a good trade. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Kellogg's. From great starts come great things. Mercury Marine, 75 years of marine excellence. Motor Guide, introducing the new XI-5 and Pinpoint GPS. Plano, protect your passion. Folgers, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. And by Chevy, brought to you by the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Got some rain coming, son. Might be a pretty good little storm right there. At least we hadn't had any thunder and lightning. Is that thunder? Come on, dive, dive, dive. God, wind's blowing so hard, it's got such a boat in my line, I can't even get my crankbait to dive. Now that's blowing. Yeah, that wind seems to step it up a notch here lately, but we just kind of ducked in here behind this point on another place that I've caught a couple, but it's still windy. This is what you want. Come on, I'm one four or five pounder away. The weather was getting rough in the afternoon and that was causing a flurry of bites there for the top on. 10 anglers on the Walmart FLW Tour on Beaver Lake. That's a big, big old Beaver Lake smallie right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Yes. Woo. <laughs> That's the way we roll, baby. As the day drew to a close, four main contenders emerged. Matt Airy, Andy Morgan, Travis Fox, and David Dudley, who was focused on adapting to the changing weather and spending time where the big largemouth live. You know, anytime you're in a clear impoundment, if you can look, see how the wind is blowing in on these rocks. Wind makes things harder for the fish to see the, your bait, so wind is always your friend in clear water. There's a good one. Oh my gosh, it's a big one. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what happens when you stay in largemouth territory. No more spots, no more smallmouth. Stay in largemouth territory, baby. Largemouth territory. <laughs> Oh! Oh! That's a three pounder. There he is again. God! Oh! Travis Fox believed he could be the hometown hero and had the bites to do it. Man, I'm so close, I can just taste it. I, I just need to hit that, I'm thinking 18 pound mark because Andy and Matt, man, those guys are good, they don't stumble. Fox was debating on whether he should go back to the bank that produced early or stick it out here in hopes of a big bite. Oh, that was her! Gosh! God, oh, man! She hit it and come plumb out of the water. The agony and the ecstasy of high stake bass fishing can be tough to endure, and Fox felt both today. All right, we're gonna go to Prairie Creek, fish behind the buoys where we started this morning. Meanwhile, Matt Airy had mostly highs all day, despite the fact he hadn't pulled out a keeper in the last couple of hours. Well, I mean, I hate to say it, but that stuff was getting so hard to fish. I do feel like there might be a few more bites in that area. But this, this area right here, it's not getting the pressure today like it has in the previous few days. I mean, there's as many big fish that live back here as there is anywhere on the lake. So coming here just hoping for one more big bite. And uh, I don't want to jinx myself. I think we closed that door part of the way earlier today. We just need to shut it now. Oh, be a big one. Be a big one. Oh, that might help, baby. That might help. Oh, it's gonna be close. That might give me an ounce right there. That's what we're calling, and that's probably a two and a quarter at least. 
Andy Morgan already finished second at a tour event this season, but this time around he knew that his chances of getting past Airy were much better if he could get just one more big bite. There he is. Be a big and stay on there. God, it's a big small mouth. Got your butt. Got your butt. We gotta go. <laughs> Was this big smallmouth the fish he needed to claim his second tour victory? The electrifying final weigh-in was next. and six ounces, 10 pounds and 11 ounces, 14 pounds, four ounces. Limits were in abundance on this final day at Beaver Lake. Wow! Casey Ashley's monster bag kicked it off and the crowd wanted more. So David Dudley delivered. Number five, wow! A five best limit for the Castro Pro, David Dudley, new leader. And nine ounces moves David to first place with 54 pounds and 14 ounces. Three pros left. He came all the way from Rogers, Arkansas to put on a show for you guys. Travis Fox got so close, giving his local fans hope with four solid fish, but needed a big one to top Dudley. What do we need? About a six pounder unofficially. We'll see. Five bass limit! What a fish, man. The crowd was electrified, even though he fell short of the lead. You need 16.5. Five. five today worth 15 pounds, 15 ounces. So close, yet so far away. And all Travis could do was watch as Andy Morgan showed again why he's the top ranked angler in the world. See number four, number five. A five best limits. Wow. Check those out, David Dudley. 16 pounds and eight ounces. He is the new. You guys welcome all the way from Shelby, North Carolina, Wacom Pro, Matt Airy. These two pros have earned it this week, man. Here we go, it's Matt Airy versus Andy Morgan. You could slice the tension with a knife as Airy loaded in his first three fish. The crowd could sense this was gonna be close. Do you have number four? Yes, sir. Let's see it. Number four. <laughs> this is gonna be close. Number five, it needs to be a pretty good fish. You have the kicker, Matt Airy. A five-ass limit! Let's do it, it's gonna be close. You need 14 pounds even. Five today worth. 15 pounds, nine ounces. Matt Airy, you're the champion. Your Beaver Lake champion for 2014, Matt Airy, $125,000 richer for the first time FLW Tour champion. Matt, it's a real pleasure and honor to me to present you this trophy. You have achieved a great goal. Congratulations. Talk about what you're feeling, man. I know this has been emotional. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, it is just, it's what I've drank about since I was a kid. He's standing right here. What I noticed in practice, a few fish I was catching were just loaded with crawfish. And uh, I've never been on a really, really strong jig bite here before, but that's what I got on this week. And, and that was my, uh, my go-to boat was a little ball head finesse jig and just pitching around those rock transitions and those spawning pockets. I really didn't think I had even anywhere close to what I had. And to win, I mean, you know, it just, it, it all came together. And it's your time, it's your time. When the dust settled over half the field, cracked the 50 pound mark. What a performance from Airy and all of our pros here on the final day.
To get the most comprehensive coverage of the Walmart FLW Tour, complete with tips, blogs, and videos from top pros, go to flwoutdoors.com. 